Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the whole elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Got to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahia, not Allah. It's Yahweh. And his only begotten son name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapos Christos, not Yeshaya, not Yehoshua. It's Yahweh Shai. So we got to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekab Quraysh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who will, who teach well. To other apostles and elders of all of Israel, rather than accept it or not. And a sincere salutation to all the Akim, pushing the truth and believing the truth. Throughout the four ends of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hopeful elect. And Shalom to the Akwath who are listening and learning. The few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from GMS Orlando Camp, coming at you another lesson. In true facts, faith, and edification, another daily edification. Lord's willing, it's be edifying. And this is the order is being set. Call like how So I'm gonna play this clip. I got two clips I'm gonna play, then I'm gonna get some precepts. Lord willing, it's be edifying. The order is being set. Okay, so I was just thinking about this, and let me know what y'all think. But there has been times where I will be talking to a man, and I won't be feeling it, and people will be like, why? And I'll be like, he's just too nice. And people will look at me like I'm stupid. They'll be like, what do you mean he's too nice? Like, you want somebody mean? And I figured it out. It's, it's not that I want somebody mean. It's just what I'm looking for in a man is masculine energy that is dominant over my masculine energy so it can bring out my feminine energy does that make sense like if i feel like i have more masculine energy than you do then i feel like you can't really be dominant over me and i can't be submissive and my feminine energy can't come out does that make sense because it makes sense to me now you see women want a man that's masculine, man. And what plantation Christianity has taught our people, starting with the men, is to be emotional, effeminate, weak-minded. That's why these women that's in these holy houses, a.k.a. churches, always say they want them a God-fearing man. When you hear women say they want them a God-fearing man, they want these men that go to these holy houses that's weak, emotional. Men that they men that these women can control, man. But real women, they want a masculine man. And this is, we always bring it out. This truth makes you a man. King David told Solomon that. First Kings 2 and 1. In Job 38 and 3, the Lord say, Gird up thy loins like a man. He demanded of us. Right? Uh Isaiah 46 and 8. Men, the Lord looking for men. Proverbs 8 and 4, Ezekiel 34 and 31, Revelations 21 and 3, the Lord is looking for men. Not weak, not effeminate, not emotional. But that's what plantation Christianity has done to our men. But a real woman want a masculine man, which the Lord is raising up right now, man. Let's get this. This is Isaiah 32 and verse 2. And it reads, And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadows of a great rock in a weary land. Women looking for men that's going to protect them, man. Because that's a man's job. To protect, provide. Verse 3. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. It's talking about the women. They going to say the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. These women cleaving to these masculine men. Which the Lord is raising up. Through this truth, man. This is um 
2 Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So, men that endure hardness as a good soldier. These is the type of men these women is looking for, man. This is the spirit of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Always showing us examples. Always showing us examples, man. Show thyself a man. Let's get this. Here's a little fun fact. Um, there are more women on this planet than men. Um, and, and that's facts. It's like uh, 14 women to every man. Now this is this is a video from um, the elder. This channel is GMS Awakening. 144, the end. He did this video, right? This is really spiritual, man. This is the Lord. This is Yahweh Shema Washah showing us examples, man, of order, of things, of 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 the the whole flag of Israel being set in order, man. Start with the men first and foremost, and then the women. This is prophecy, man. The Lord is showing us examples of prophecy with this clip right here, man. Let's run it back. Here's a little fun fact. Um, there are more women on this planet than men. Um, in the United States, we have about a quarter of our population in jail. Um, another quarter of our population identifies as LGBTQ. So with that being said, it is a nigga shortage out here. It is a shortage of available good niggas out here. So for all you bitches that think you deserve your own nigga, like your own personal nigga, like that's only yours. <laughs> like, okay, it's some women that do. But are you that bitch? Like, what do you bring to the table that make you think you deserve your own nigga and it's a nigga shortage? Since we're up, you have to share that nigga. That's our nigga. <laughs> Hey, it's spiritual, man. This is the Lord setting things in order, man. Okay? Now, when you read Isaiah chapter 3, right? Starting at verse 16. It tell you how the Lord going to put these proud women to shame. Right? He going to take away all your, your nice garments, your good smells, perfumes, your soaps, all the different things that you use to smell good, look good, to make yourself feel good. He's going to take all that away. Right? When you read Isaiah chapter 3, starting at verse 16, all the way to 26, that leads into Isaiah 4 and 1. Now, you can go read it on your time. Go read Isaiah chapter 3, starting at verse 16 down to 26. Because I want to make this point, because it leads to Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. What reproach? When you read Isaiah chapter 3, it's going to be a reproach for the women. It's going to be a lot of hell going on out here, man. When you read Isaiah 32, verse 9 through 12, it tells you the Lord said he's going to take away from you your gatherings, right? It said your, your vintage shall fail and your gatherings shall not come, meaning your job is going to be gone and your money will not come in. Whether you're working, making $150,000 a year, $80,000, whatever. 50,000, your Section 8 hood, Habitat housing, Social Security disability, EBT, all that's going to be gone. And you're going to have to plead to a righteous man. Because you heard the sister just said, all these men, all the men in the world now, is becoming part of the LGBTQP, right? And the ones that's not, they're going to die in the war. All your thugs and gangsters and D-boys, they're going to be destroyed, man. Here's proof. This is Isaiah 3. That's why you women need to read Isaiah 3, starting at verse 16, down to 26. Because the end all be all is, you're going to have to cleave to a righteous man of your house about your mouth shot. This is Isaiah 3 and 24. Isaiah 3 and 25. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty men in a war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. So if you don't be if you don't cleave to a righteous man, <laughs> you're gonna be destroyed. Again, thy men shall fall by the sword, 
and thy mighty men in the war. This talking about all the men of you so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitian women. Your men gonna die by the sword. They're gonna get drafted to the war and they're gonna die. And the ones that don't make it, your, your thug gangsters and D-boys, they're gonna be destroyed here in Babylon the Great. And we know the rest of them, they already part of the LGBTQ, the LGBTQP. They transformers now. Okay? Here's another precept to prove your men are going to be gone. This is 2 Ezra, chapter 16 and 31. And it reads, Even so in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search the houses with the sword. This time my neighbor going against neighbor looking for food. Okay? Looking for water. And if you don't have a righteous man in that day, you're going to get taken. Ain't no telling what's going to happen to you. If you ever see the movie Training Day, <clears throat> when they was riding in the car and they passed by the alleyway and saw the young and saw the young Northern Kingdom chick was about to get taken by those two bombs, use your imagination, man. Okay? 2nd 16 and 31. Even so in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword, and the earth shall and the earth shall be laid waste. And the fields thereof shall wax old, and her ways, all her paths shall grow full of thorns, because no man shall travail there through. When you watch the movie, I am legend. These things are going to happen, man. This is the point. Verse 33. The virgins shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. In the wars. Shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine? Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Abishai. So you need to cleave to what's going on, man. The Lord put the spirit on these women to say these things. And she ain't the only one. If you know, if you know my channel, if you know my videos, y'all done did videos on this. Women out there that's ready for this, man. <laughs> now, the other women one saying how she's saying it right now. The Lord got a different, a different spirit in the earth. She's saying it straight, boldly, and frank. Ain't no, she giving you the straight skinny. Hey, you gonna have to share that nigga. Period. And when it say seven women should take hold of one man to take away the approach of not starving, not getting raped, not being thrown in concentration camps. Hey, it's gonna be more than seven women. That's just completion. The number seven in Isaiah 4 and 1 just mean completion. It could be 30, 40 women to one man. Who knows, man? Who knows what the spirit of Yahweh Shema was going to do? Now, and these devils hate this, man, because the Lord has sent us an order before their eyes. This is Psalm 15, 16. It reads, But unto the wicked power self, what has thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth? And, and the reason our women have rebelled against us, because the Lord put the spirit on these devils to do so and gave them liberation. But as he said, the reason we went out from the, the how how we went out from the Lord, He made our women to rebel against us, cause we rebelled against Yahweh. So He's making our women do so. But now He's bringing the women back in humbleness, in meekness, man. It say, "Seeing thou hast hated instruction and casting my words behind thee, right? This what this what this what the wicked did. Gave our women liberation to gather abroad, right? They don't need the man. Well, now these women realizing they need that masculine king, man." And not just a regular man in the world, a man of truth, a man of Yahweh It say verse 19, thy givest thy mouth, it say uh, when thy, verse 18, when thy saw a thief, did not consent with him, and has been partakers with adulterers. Talk about Esau, all the wickedness that he did, right? Thy citizen speaketh against thy brother, thy slain thy own mother's son. These things has thy done, and I kept silent. He was the one that made everything Turned the world upside down, right? He turned the world upside down. Isaiah 29 and 16. It say, These things have thou done, and I kept silent. Though thou they say, though thou thou, it say, thou thought thou, it said, thou thoughtest that I was all together, such as one of thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. That's the point. The Lord is setting us in order before these devils' eyes, and they can't do nothing, they can't do nothing about it. And our women is getting in order, man. This is the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shah. It's not us. It's Yahweh Shema Shah, man. These women looking for 
righteous spiritual men, not these holly house men, the one that go to these churches, man, because they emotional, weak, and effeminate. So we're being set in order in the presence of our enemies. This is Psalms 113. Hey, could the Lord put the spirit on these women to understand their order, man? This is Psalms chapter 1 and verse 7. This is Psalms 1 and, and 5. Who is like unto the Lord our power, who dwelleth on high, who humble himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth? He raised up the poor out of the dust, which is us, the hopefully elect, because two-thirds ain't going to rise. They're going to be destroyed. It reads, he raised up the poor out of the dust. What dust? The confusion of Babylon the great, man. He's raising the men first and foremost and the women out of the dust of confusion, man. This is beautiful, man. Can't make this up. He raised up the poor. Uh, Psalms 113 and 7. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill, right? Verse 8, that he may set him with princes. Say, who were princes? The hopeful elect, the one Lord willing, the 144 man. It say, even with the princes of his people, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, is raising up these elect men and their women. Verse 9 say, he maketh the barren woman to keep house, to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. These women ready for order, man. They ready for the order, man. Okay? This is Proverbs 14 and 1. Can't make this up, man. Every wise woman built up her house. And what she's bringing to the table, what she's saying, she's trying to build a house, man. Hey, sisters, y'all gonna have to share them guys. Y'all gonna have to share them. This is part of, hey, because if, if one man had, in righteousness, had three, four women to the house, everybody don't got to bust their ass for this devil, man. Everybody won't have to bust their tail for this devil, man. Everybody can do. Uh, part time work, man. If they chose to, because there'd be enough money in the house, it'd always be somebody at the house for the kids. The kids will have to go to school, they could be homeschooled because it'll always be somebody there to teach the kids, man. You see, order, man. It say Proverbs 14 and 1 again every wise woman build of her house, but the foolish pluck of it down with her hands. What does it mean that the foolish pluck it down? She want to be head of the house. I don't need no man. I'm like, I can get my own money. I've been doing this. I've been doing this on my own. Not knowing the whole time. You how about Shema Shah's want me to give you the benefits? Not realizing the whole time. You how about Shema Shah's want to deceive these devils to put the spirit on you to say you don't need a man in the house. Well, you do. Because that's order. If you're a Hebrew Israelite woman, so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indian, Haitian women, you need a righteous man on your house by Shah. Point blank, period. And if you ain't willing to slide over, to let the rest come in, that the Lord going to have Dean to come to that one man, then you're going to get kicked out. And somebody that's going to take your place. And that's just facts, man. Because the Lord is raising these women up. He raising them up now, man. It's women that's sitting at home watching videos humbly. They ain't even coming on the comment board saying Shalom. They watching videos humbly, highlighting their scriptures, getting ready, preparing themselves, man. The Lord got these women sent back being prepared, man. We don't see them. We don't hear from them. But they there, man. They watching. The Lord got them just waiting for that day. And when you, when the women, brother women that don't want to fall in line now, <laughs> you're going to be on the back burner in that day. Because these women going to come running. To these spiritual men. The Lord going to put it on their mind to do so. They know where the camp's at. They watching the videos. They know where the camp's at. They just sit back patiently. The Lord is building them up. Full of, what is what is it? I'll tell you in our Revelation. Um, Romans um, 14. They are being the Lord putting the spirit on them. At home watching videos. To be fully persuaded in their mind. So every wise woman built up her house. But the foolish plug it down her hand. Who's the foolish? In Isaiah 3, starting at verse 16, on down to 26. Isaiah 32, starting at verse 9 through 12. These are the women that pluck down their house, man, because they want to be head of the house, because they're doing their own thing. So they think. But all that's going to be gone in that day. And you have to cling to a spiritual man. That's why I say in Isaiah 32 and 3, 
And, and the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. These are talking about the, the women that's going that's righteously coming in, man. This is um Psalms 68 and verse 12. It reads, Kings of armies did flee apace, and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. And that's what they're supposed to be doing, man. Dividing the spoils at home. When you go to read Titus chapter 2, starting at verse 3 through 5, man. This is the Lord sending our women back in order, man, under the men. It's prophecy. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. This is, um, these scriptures ain't for nothing, man. This Proverbs 27, 27. Listen to this. And it reads. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food. For the food of thy household. He's talking to the men. And for the maintenance of for thy maidens. Proverbs 27, 27. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, which we should be drinking. Good goat milk. For the food of thy household and for the maintenance for thy maidens. Maidens with an S. This ain't talking about one. It's talking about multiple. It's going to be more than seven. It's order, man. This is the Lord. Send things back in order. Because your men is going to be these weak. Every man that's not coming in the spirit of power, Yahweh Shema Shah, is going to be destroyed. First Peter 3 and 1. Likewise, ye wise, being subject to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, that they also may Without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And this is what she's telling you. You want to fall in line now? She might not even be in the truth. She, she might not even be following. Obviously, she knows something. She's been watching somebody. And the only ones that's pushing this seven women in that day is GMS, man. And other brothers that teaching like my doctrine. Like, I'm the one I bought. You got the brothers from Men of Valor. We the only ones teaching this. Isaiah 4 and 1. It say, While they behold your chaste conversation, cope with fear, who's adorn, let it not be that I would adorn of plated the hair, of plaid the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Which is in the sight of power and great price. For after this manner in old time, the holy women, also who trusted in power, adored themselves being in subject unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and 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 are not afraid with the amazement. You see, it's an order, man. It's an order. And the women's is coming back to this. The, the real daughters of Sarah. The Lord got the spirit of these women to say these things, man. So you other women out there can see this and fall in line, man. Whether you want to accept it or not, it will happen. It will happen. <clears throat> Come precepts, righteous women. This is Philippians 4 and 3. It reads, And I entreated thee also. True yoke fellow, help those women which labor with you in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life, man. Hey, the Lord is raising these women back up, man. You think it's you think it's just out of the blue the Lord got this woman to say this, man? No, this is the Lord showing us examples. Hey, and we need to cleave to it. You women better, you women better tighten up. You don't want to fall in line. The Lord is going to move you out the way and replace you with other women that he's going to have the spirit on. If you can receive it, you better receive it now while you got time. Because it's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. Hey, hey, just like just like the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast being made mandatory, just like World War III, just like Jacob Trouble, any day now, <laughs> it can all break out, man. These seven women cleaving to one man at any day now, it can all break out, man. You better be prepared. 
The Lord said, make you ready to the battle, man. That's what we doing. Giving you the straight skinny of the scriptures. Ain't no sugarcoating. This is, uh, because this is what the Lord say. We're supposed to be looking for these women. These are the type of women that's going to come. This Jeremiah 9 and 17, it reads, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh host, consider ye and call for the morning women. Who are the morning women? The hopefully let women, man, of the unnumbered multitude. We're supposed to be looking for these women because they coming. The Lord is, Yahweh Shema Shai is going to send them. It ain't going to be us. They're going to say, hey, yeah, you, 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 and you. Come on. No, it's the Lord going to do it. Jeremiah 9 and 17. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, host. Consider ye and call for the morning women that they may come, come well to these spiritual men so they can have a cover from the destruction, man. And send for cunning women that they may come. Cunning going to the women being of wisdom, understanding, knowing what's going to play out because they've been following and watching the videos. They've been watching the apostles of Great Millstone. They've been watching the elders of Great Millstone. They've been watching the younger brothers and the brothers that are teaching the same sound doctrine, which is of Yahweh Shem Shah. Again, Jeremiah 9 and 17, thus said the Lord Yahweh of hosts, consider ye and call for the morning women that they may come. Consider, because this righteous women got to get saved too, man. They got to bring back, we got to bring back the, what, the elect of Israel. The elect of Israel, who know who they are, have to bring back the rest of the two-thirds that get destroyed with women. The women got to be there. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, consider ye and call for the morning women, that they may come and send for the cunning women, and send for cunning women, that they may come. These are the women that are searching the truth, just like the men are. And how they going to do it? Through childbearing, man. <clears throat> they shall get salvation through childbearing. This is 1 Timothy 2. And <clears throat> 13, for Adam was first born and then Eve, and Adam was not the seed, but the woman being the seed was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, man. If they continue, you see, the Lord got a selected, chosen of women, man, that he's going to bring them out before all hell break loose or in the midst of hell breaking loose. And they're going to plead to these righteous men. This is uh, Acts 17 and 4. Lord, witness be edifying. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. It was many. It said the chief women. Why I say chief women? Because these men, just like when you read about in Luke 2 about Anna, she said she was a prophetess, which prophetess just mean she was the she was the wife of a prophet. That's what prophetess mean, man. She just was the wife of a prophet, right? She'll be a chief woman. She'll be considered as a chief woman because she was with him from her virginity until her old age. It tell you that when you read Luke 2, that she dwelt in the temple constantly, man. Praising Yahweh by Shema Washah, man. But she'll be considered as a chief woman, man, because she was a prophet's wife. Okay? It said they considered they consorted the Paul and Silas, man. Of the chief women, not a few. I mean, it was a lot, man. Hey, so Lord willing, it's be able to find. Lord willing. Hey, cause like she said, let's run it back. Hey, these old thugs, gangsters, and D boys, they're gonna be gone. Only thing gonna be left out here is spiritual men. Cause the Transformers gonna be gone. this planet than men. Um, in the United States, we have about a quarter of our population in jail. Um, another quarter of our population identifies as LGBTQ. So with that being said, it is a nigga shortage out here. 
<laughs> There's a shortage of available good niggas out here. So for all you bitches that think you deserve your own nigga, like your own personal nigga, like that's only yours. Like, okay, it's some women that do. But are you that bitch? Like, what do you bring to the table that make you think you deserve your own nigga and it's a nigga shortage? Sis, grow up. You gonna have to share that nigga. That's our nigga. <laughs> It's the Lord was edifying. Got to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Bahashem, Rekach Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who well, who teach well. Who are the apostles and elders over all of Israel. And a sincere salutation to all the Akim, pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hopeful elect. And Shalom to the Akwath who are listening and learning. There are a few sisters who are listening and learning. A hey, Lord willing is edifying. I got two precepts I'm going to close with. This is 1 Timothy chapter 5 and 6. Because if you women that don't want to fall in order, don't want to fall in line, you're going to be destroyed. It's 1 Timothy 5 and 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Because she don't want to fall in order. So you're going to be destroyed. Verse 7. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. That they may be blameless, okay? It say, verse 9 say, verse 10, it reads, it say, well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have revealed, if she, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. But the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax old, for when they have begun to wax wanting to get some Mashiach, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. You see? It says, and whither they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers, also busybodies, speaking things which they are not. I would therefore that the younger women Marry, bear children, guide the house, give no occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. You see? So, fall in line, man. Fall in order. Because a lot of them are already destroyed and they ain't coming back. But that's the lot that the Lord have on them. If the Lord gave you the understanding, you can hear these words, because it said in Isaiah 32 and 3, they that see and their eyes be not dim, and they that hear, they shall hearken, man. This is, this, is, this is your life. If you can hear the understanding, if you can receive it, that's your calling, man. You better cleave to it. Because any day now, the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, uh, Jacob's trouble, World War III, is going to break out, man. Any day now, any time, man. So until next time, I say Shalom. The water for tuning in. May your house your mouth shall continue to bless you in your houses. Stay prayed up. ASA, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And guess what? If you're going to stay like that, this is you. Michael 7 10. Then she that is my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her. Why? Because she wants to live in pleasure. So you're a dead woman walking. Okay? It says, and shame shall cover her, which say unto me, Where is the Lord Yahweh thy power? My eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden down. As the Maya of the street. Maya is dirt, mud, clay. You're going to be trampling on her feet, okay? It said, then she that is my enemy. What did the Lord say about his enemies? This is Luke 19 and 27. It reads, But those my enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, you don't want to follow in order, under your house by Shema Shai, bring hither and slay them before me. You don't, want to get in, you don't want to get in line? You don't want to come in the order of integrity? At the standard of Yahweh Shema Shah, which is integrity and order, you're going to be destroyed, man. You're going to be trodden underfoot. Until next time, I say Shalom. Wah, ba, ba, ba.